Oh, scaring me. Let's go. That was a huge year. Yeah, uh, it was my first year. Do you want me to look down the lens? Yeah. It was like the first year racing outside of Australia. So that was like a pretty massive shift in my kind of like knowledge of the world of bikes. So we went over to Europe. We did three EWSs in Europe, three EWSs in North America, three more EWSs in Europe. Came home, did some Aussie rounds, went to Chile, came home. Nah, it's just been nonstop. It's just unreal, loving it. Yes. I've had some assistance from some very, very phenomenal sponsors They're all over my jersey and they do amazing things for me. Um, but yeah, a lot of, a lot of uh, personal investment from myself. Um, but it's 100% worth it for me. Like I could have gone over there and come dead last at every race and I reckon it would have been worth it. So for it to have, you know, to, to, to have like racked some results under my belt, um, and experiences more than anything. It's just been priceless. So yeah, I'm stoked. And I, and I also like, I was expecting to come home just completely broke, but I actually came home with like, you know, not completely bankrupt. So I was kind of stoked on that. And I like had to budget so hard. My spreadsheet is just phenomenal. Um, but yeah, no, a lot to learn. And I think the more, the more I do this, the more I realize I don't know. Like I, the, the more I, I realize that there's so much more to know. Um, just expanding how much you know about you know traveling and budgeting and racing. It's all learning experience. I'm a little baby in the scheme of things. Biggest thing I learned. Um, ah, yeah, that's one on the spot. I'm trying to come up with something whimsical. Um, no, nah, I mean. <laughs> I think learning that like you've got to just kind of go with it at times and just kind of let the let the experience kind of guide you a little bit. If you try and control too many variables, you'll end up just crashing and burning. Um, because especially when it's your first attempt, there's going to be so many things that go wrong for me. The first setback was um, in the airport in Sydney. I'd, I'd been on like hours and hours of phone calls with Qantas making sure that I had extra bags booked. <laughs> I get there and they're like, you know that 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 receipt, that EMD? They're like, nah, it's not valid. You have to pay 70 bucks a kilo. Um, and my bag weighed 23 kilos. So you can do some maths on that. It was a pretty major setback to start out the trip. And like, just 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 little things like Italian tolls and and um, and, and all these all these things that just kind of spook you out a bit first go. And once you've done it, oh, losing your bike. First thing to Europe, my bike didn't show up, and like I was just so scared because I'm like, this is the only thing I need. Like I could lose anything else, but I need this so badly. And like it's almost the status quo now that your bike just it just gets lost. Like it's just the yeah. way it is. Um, but yeah, just going with it, like learning and being through that once, I now realize that there's truly nothing I could do about it. So there's no point worrying about it. So like the bike should eventually show up. Um, my bike <laughs> my bike on the way back from Chile is still in Auckland at the moment. So <laughs> I'm still realizing that it's, uh, it's, it's just an ongoing thing and you just kind of let it happen and it'll eventually sort itself out. So that's it. That's a tough one. Um, the races were all good. I reckon it's a close battle between Trophy of Nations and Pump Track Worlds in Chile. Uh, for different reasons. First of all, Pump Track Worlds in Chile was just this like completely different crowd. Like you, I think there were four or five different Olympians there in BMX. You had all the like the mountain bike gods. You had you know Bass and Caroline and Niels there. Like it's it's, it's kind of like a different sort of crew that I've been starting to become friends with, and I met so many amazing people. And it's also because I won the qualifier, and everybody there's on a paid ticket. You're basically just in this like week long holiday, all expenses paid. Everybody has the same interests, and you're just like vibing out so hard with so many people with the same sort of goals. Um, and everyone's so fast. So yeah, that was really, really fun. And it was also South America. So Chile's like the sickest place. Um, but then on the other hand, Trophy of Nations was unreal because it's Finale, which is like easily my favorite EWS location just because it's so beautiful, like close to the beach. You got the old city, the tracks are unreal. And everyone was kind of like, they'd, they'd, they'd like taken the edge off themselves. Like they weren't taking it, like they weren't as, um, 
uptight as they were throughout the start of the season. So like everyone was chilling out a little bit. Everyone was happy. Everyone had gotten to know each other. And I was also racing with Luke and Rem. Um, so yeah, that was like, that was, that was good. I'm gonna have to final answer finale Trophy Nations. Arm pump, arm pump. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I went to my first EWS in Scotland. I was like, I had no idea how it was gonna go down. Um, Scotland, the tracks for me at least, were very basic, very flowy, not too much gravity, and they were pretty smooth. And I was like, oh beauty, this is what EWS is like, we're, we're golden. Um, and I had like a, I, I, got, I got in third there in my first race, that was incredible. Um, and then I went to Petson, which I hadn't really been made aware of the fact that it was renowned as the hardest stage. Like the, the top to bottom stage was the hardest stage in the entire kind of like history of EWS. Like I think the only close contenders top of the world. But this stage you get, it's about 1100 meters vert. The stage is about three and a half, four Ks long. And it's 15 minutes of just pure braking, braking and bumping like, I, I, I could not comprehend the amount of fatigue that developed in my arms. Like, I, you couldn't hold onto the bike, you've fallen off the bike, your brakes feel like they don't work anymore. And like, everybody was experiencing it. I just felt like I was just getting my absolute doors clapped off. Cause like, I'm trying my best and I'm riding like someone who's given up because like, I know that if I drop into that shoot, I'm not gonna be able to stop because I can't hold on and I can't grab the brakes hard enough. Yeah. So like I got I got I think I think Luke put like two and a half minutes into me on one stage on that track. Just cause like I crashed like seven times. I just couldn't hold on to my it was actually so upsetting. Um but then I learned that, you know, there's ways to, you know, make the arm pump less intense, ways to mitigate it, ways to prepare for it, ways to um, reduce the compounding effects of it after in recovery. Um, and then things get better. So like you just get, you get swept off your feet once and you kind of like figure it out the next time and kind of get yourself sorted out. But yeah, that was unbelievable. That's why I'm here right now. I'm in Medina doing arm pump training. <laughs> it's the way to go. Oh, I don't know about K's. So we flew Australia to Europe, Europe to Canada, Canada to US, then back, then back, then back, then back, and then Chile return. So we've done like eight or nine international flights. Um, so yeah, the bill racks up pretty quick when you're, when you're paying for flights. The worst part of flying, losing your bike. Yeah. Um, I can do, like I'm, oh, oh. <laughs> look, like I'm, I, like having said that I didn't travel much previously, like internationally, like there was still this super cool novelty with flying. I was like, oh, we get to go on a plane, we're going up high. And now I'm just like, let's just flick a switch and teleport me back home. Like <laughs> the most ridiculous travel journey I did, this is like some gypsy privateer, style like torture. So I left Finale Monday morning and I arrived in Sydney. In like, oh no, I arrived back at home in Coffs um, Friday afternoon and didn't sleep in a bed the whole time. So, wow. so, I, so I drove my van, dropped the van off in Europe, drove to the air, I drove, um, caught a train to an airport, flew to Munich, spent like 24 hours on the floor in Munich, flew to Dubai, spent time on the floor in Dubai, flew to Sydney, lost my bike and got it all sorted. So um, yeah, I, I, having a bit more budget would definitely make that nicer. Like even just having a bed to sleep on, like I got, I got so sick because of that and it was not worth it. Okay. Like I, I saved a couple hundred bucks, but like I was knocked flat for like the next two weeks. So yeah, grimmed it up, learnt that once and did it the hard way, but yeah, you gotta do it at least once. <laughs> Honestly, we're still working it out. Um, of course, I'm gonna keep riding bikes. I'm gonna do everything I can to try and improve on what I've done this year. Like this year has been absolutely ridiculous. Like I've spent, I've had so many incredible memories. Um, so yeah, next year it'd be nice to hit some crankworks. I think that's a pretty, um, 
kind of like parallel skill set. Like we got the the BMX, -y, the gravity stuff. So it'd be cool to kind of tick that box a little bit. And also hanging out at Pump Track Worlds with Niels and uh, you know Caroline and Bass and stuff. They got me pretty pretty pumped on doing doing some crankwork stuff. So that'd be good. And of course EWS in Derby Medina. We're gonna have a good crack at that. Really excited for that. I'm gonna try my best to qualify for Pump Track Worlds again because that was just phenomenal. Um, what else we got? I'm probably gonna go back to uni. Um, I, well, yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, so I, I um, am in the process of getting a Bachelor of Engineering. Um, and I was doing my first semester of engineering at the same time as my first three EWS races in Europe. So I had a, I had a four hour maths exam, the hardest maths exam of my life on the same day of EWS practice of my first ever EWS. So I'm up at 4 a.m. because time difference is different. Yeah. I'm at 4 a.m. on a Zoom call doing this gnarly maths exam, wrap it up at eight o'clock and ship off to Tweed Valley to hit practice on my first ever EWS. So it was just so intense. Um, got that done, got distinctions in all my courses and then went you know what let's just defer next semester and have a have a good crack so I've been I've been absolutely loving the well I mean it's not even free time because you just fill it with other stuff but um, yeah it's been enjoyable not having to worry about you know calculus <laughs> carb corner never left mate carb corner is carb corner is relentless for if anyone doesn't know what Carb Corner is, it started in Tweed Valley. I shared accommodation with Luke and Rem. Um, so probably the three hungriest people in, you know, New South Wales. Uh, and we went massive on our pasta and rice feeds and we like put it all in one corner and called it Carb Corner and it kind of <laughs> kind of blew up a little bit. So now everywhere we go, we have these gigantic stashes of carbs and um, people try to out carb us, but I, I we've never been out carbed. Uh, but yeah, Carb Corner will be here and uh, Carb Corner will never die. This is a really, really funny question because my first ever time I came to Medina, I had this exact problem. Um, I was riding Derby previously and I, I like cracked my brakes so that like air was getting into the system and oil was leaking out. So I'd, I'd bleed it up. This was before I knew that I'd cracked it. So I'd bleed it up and think it was all good. And my first ever run down Medina, I had no back brake and it was the worst experience of my life. Like for starters, like my first time in Medina, it's a bit of baptism by fire because it's gnarly. Um, so no back brake. And to answer your question, I'd rather have a back brake than a front brake. Like I'd rather skid my back brake down a hill than try and stop my way down a hill. Um, that's not saying I prefer front or back brake, but like just riding without a back brake was just so frustrating because like you just can't do it. Um, yeah, that's a long answer to a very simple question. <laughs> blown front tire or a blown rear shock? Blown front tire because you can just manual at home. Yeah. Yeah. Could. Yeah. <laughs> you just wheelie at home. Yeah. Um. Oh, because they both suck. Yeah. Um, look, can I do anything about it or do I have to ride it? Because oh. uh, I've become quite good at the old like knee twitch it back. Because um, I pinch my saddle a lot. Um, oh, I'd rather have the bent saddle. I just, I can't deal with bent bars. Like it's just, but like you adapt to it over time. Like how slightly are these bent? Like just a couple degrees or? Yeah, okay, I'd rather, I'd rather have the uh, bent saddle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Bent bars, bent bars. Cause like, if, you, if you're pedaling and it's all like torqued out and twisted, it's just horrible. I feel like I could get used to the bars. Yeah. Yeah. That's it? Yeah.